Good morning, everyone. We're going to give it a couple minutes for people to join. Good morning. Give me a few moments. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. How's it going, Katie? Good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another installation of the Office of Greenways and Trails' Outdoor Florida webinar series. This month's webinar is focused on National Biking Month, and we have two great presenters for you today. Our two presenters today will be Terry Palmieri, the Executive Director of the Southern Off-Road Bicycle Association, or SORBA, and Shane Richardson, Vice President of the Swamp Mountain Bike Club. So we're gonna go ahead and hold all questions until after both of the presentations, but please feel free to put into the chat box um, any questions you have during the presentations and we'll get to them afterwards. So Terry, if you'd like to take it away. Well, thank you, Katie. Uh, thanks for inviting me on this webinar this morning. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start my uh, presentation. Can everyone see that? Great, awesome. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of overview of the Southern Off-Road Bicycle Association, better known as SORBA. We have uh, 48 chapters in seven Southeastern states, of which six chapters in two affiliates are in Florida. We have over 10,000 members. We steward over 3,000 miles of trail. That takes about 50,000 volunteer hours to maintain. We have about 1,000 miles in what I call pie in the sky, where there are opportunities for mountain bike trails, but uh, don't have land manager approval yet. We have about 500 miles of trail in planning and design trip stage, meaning it was approved by the land manager. We are uh, doing the professional planning and design for them. And then we have 200 miles of trail and 10 bike park projects that are shovel ready, meaning that they have land manager approval, the planning and design has been done, all the uh, environmental surveys have been done and they just need funding. So we have, we've been around for about 32 years and so have many of the Florida mountain bike organization. In this slide, you see all the logos from the different mountain bike organizations. Um, <clears throat> and uh, these are independent organizations that have developed uh, some really nice uh, mountain bike trails over the years. And you can see where they're located. So, so they, they've got them all over Florida. So I'm gonna answer the question that's on a lot of your minds. There's mountain biking in Florida? Well, yes, there is. <laughs> I found that out in the early 2000s. Uh, my husband and I, we travel to Florida uh, at least once a year. And our favorite trails are at Santos. Uh, that's the Marjorie Harris Cross Florida Greenway. Alafaya State Park and Bomboyette. And there's, there's many more in Florida that we love to visit. 
Here's one of our favorite trails. This is my old stomping grounds. This is from Virginia Key. Uh, this is on the Rickenbacker Causeway uh, in Miami, Florida, in Miami, going down to Key Biscayne. Uh, Virginia Key used to be a place that uh, 55 years ago, my family would go to uh, go to the beach there. It was an old, it was the Miami dump at that time. But now there's trails on it. So how did they build fun mountain bike trails on predominantly sandy soils and very little uh, elevation change? Well, they did it uh, by finding um, mining or waterway dredging spoils. Um, Alfaya State Park is actually uh, phosphate mining that occurred over a hundred years ago and never was reclaimed as they are now today. Uh, that gave them lots of elevation change and some really fun trail to ride. It's, it's very, very popular. If you go there on a weekend, you can hardly even get into the park because they have a, a wait, a line waiting to get in. Uh, Bomboyette is in the same area. This is just southeast of Tampa. Bomboyette's in that same area. And that's one of my most favorite trails. Um, the same situation, old uh, uh, phosphate mining that was never totally reclaimed. Santos is just outside of Ocala. That's where the uh, the canal that was starting to be built to uh, take shipping across the top of Florida uh, back in the 1900s uh, was stopped. Uh, but all those tailings, all those piles of dirt were left there and Santos has built a great trail system there. Uh, Caloosahatchee Regional Park, just in Fort Myers, uh, same thing. That's the dredgings from the Caloosahatchee River. And Virginia Key, the one I just showed you, that's the dredgings from the intercoastal waterway that they left at the tip of that island. So there are other ways that the mountain bike organizations have created some great trails. Again, it's sandy soil, it's flat. It's hard to find uh, ways to make it uh, sustainable um, and, and fun. So they've used different hardening techniques that you'd see there in the top left-hand corner. They have built raised uh, wooden platforms over wet areas. Uh, they've created uh, uh, jump areas there in the bottom left uh, hand area, that's in Tallahassee. And then uh, on the bottom right, they created more wooden features to give it some sense of play and fun for, for uh, bicycles. And, but the majority of the trail is just single track, which really gives you access to the many different wonderful ecosystems in Florida. And, uh, and, and gives you that sense of being out in the woods, uh, getting away from everything. Um, and uh, so this, this is my type of favorite trail right here. So who are the mountain bikers? This is a little bit old, but it gives you a general idea who we are. The 43 years uh, median age is, is probably changed now. With um, uh, the advent of, of the pandemic, a lot of new folks have been coming into uh, outdoor recreation, not just mountain biking. And a lot more young, younger folks uh, are uh, new uh, youth mountain bike uh, cycling leagues have also generated a lot of new folks coming into mountain biking of a younger age. But most of them do have uh, uh, degrees. Uh, they have a pretty good median household in income. And um, of course, uh, a lot of them have families. So these are, the f there's a whole wide variety of them from um, you know, high school education to doctors to, to all sorts of mountain bikers. It, it's a level playing field out there when you're a mountain biker. So why trails? Why are natural surface trails so important? Well, it's cost effective um, and it creates healthier communities. It, it gives access to folks um, to get out on a trail, to walk, to run, to ride a bike. Um, most of your population can get out on a natural surface trail. 
It also is a safe, uh, creates safe surrounding for outdoor recreation too. And it gives the public access to public land. Florida has been really uh, done well with that. Uh, I hear there's 25% of Florida is now public land. So natural surface trails is a great way to give access to them. Um, and their efficient use of public space and reduce the need for costly recreation infrastructure. It's also a higher return on the investment. So let's get a cost comparison here. <laughs> Golf course it could be a million dollars uh, per hole. And you can see the different uh, outdoor recreation facilities, how much they cost. And when you get down to a natural surface trail, we're really looking at around 25,000 to 52,000 per mile. Pretty cheap to get uh, give facilities for most of your population. So uh, natural surface, tra surface trails can boost the local economy, especially in your real, rural communities. Um, if they can create destination type trails and folks travel there. Um, it's, uh, we, we look at that here in my local community to create those destination type trails um, that create that, what I call a sustainable economy. Folks come here, they ride sustainable trails, they uh, spend money on, on lodging, on uh, going out to eat and uh, other types of recreation too. Mountain bikers just don't mountain bike. Uh, for instance, I also am a, uh, an angler, and uh, I like uh, pedaling too. To give an example, and I think Bentonville, Arkansas is a great example for Florida because Florida has done so much to create the paved trail system, which I'm very excited about and would love to utilize in the future. Um, but in Bentonville, what they did is, is create uh, not only paved trails, but mountain bike trails that connect up to it. So you could jump on that paved trail and ride over to a system, ride that system, come back into town. I think Florida has a great opportunity to do the same thing. So let's look at uh, the Santos trails on the uh, Cross Florida Greenway. And this is a slide that I got from uh, Mickey Tomlinson. Uh, and so you could see, even though this is a state park in the middle of Florida, it's not on the beach, <laughs> how much of an economic impact that it has to the Ocala community. Now, we've got to keep in mind that uh, the trail systems there also uh, have a lot of different user groups. Uh, there's a lot of equestrians that use those trails. Uh, there's a paved trail through there now too. and. Uh, so it's not just mountain biking, but mountain biking is a good part of it. So natural surface trails are, you can create destinations to help uh, support local rural com uh, communities, um, have a positive economic impact on them. Uh, it's also about having trails accessible to uh, folks in the city that they can get to uh, after work to get in some exercise. It's also important to have those easier trails that uh, bring in the entry level cyclists, uh, especially kids. And, uh, but more importantly, it gives public access to Florida's great public lands. And that's it. So we'll be holding questions for later on. So thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. And next up we have Shane. Thank you very much, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Terry, for that wonderful presentation. Um, I am currently the president of Swamp Mountain Bike Club uh, Incorporated. We are a 501c3 um, that has been around uh, for over 30 years. Um, we have uh, been able to, uh, in that time, we've been able to build over 120 miles of trail, uh, including um, activating uh, two of the top three most popular mountain bike trail systems in the state, Bomboyet Scrub Preserve 
and Alafia River State Park. Um, and we are currently working on expanding uh, trail access, um, not just for mountain biking, but for other users as well. Um, more trails closer to home, uh, trying to go off of Embla and Sorba's um, you know, moniker there and trying to uh, provide uh, more trail access for the community here. Um, we in our area uh, offer some of the most diverse trail systems in the state of Florida when it comes to topography, um, technical difficulty, uh, mileage, uh, uh, habitats that these trails are located in. Uh, so that's also very important. We also maintain uh, a good uh, portion of uh, 35 miles worth of multi-use trail at one of the properties that we um, help to activate. Uh, we deal with seven different land management agencies, which is a lot. Uh, we have over 1,300 members. Uh, we have been working uh, diligently with Sorba and Imba and other local community partners, uh, including other Sorba chapters and other mountain bike organizations in the state, um, on advocacy for interconnecting uh, greenways and trail, natural surface trails, uh, not just in Hillsborough County, but also in other areas of Florida. Um, some things that we're working on currently uh, is we are, as of today, we are breaking ground on a very small trail system in the city of Temple Terrace, um, but that will give uh, some more trail access to people closer to home that can, they can, you know, have some fun and, and be able to get out and get some exercise, um, and then the people, uh, community in the city of Temple Terrace, kids and families uh, will be able to also have a space for that. But the unique part of that property is that we're also um, going to be activating um, a, a space for hikers that is separate from, uh, from the biking uh, opportunity. And we are doing that along the Hillsborough River. Um, and it is going to be a very beautiful hiking path along uh, the river there. Um, we also are working with, the, uh, with Pinellas County and being able to bring, uh, again, more trails uh, closer to people that live in Hillsborough County, I mean, in Pinellas County. Pinellas County at this time does not have any natural surface trails that they can utilize. Um, they have a, a, a quite a bit of mileage of paved uh, Greenway Trail. Um, so we're really excited about the opportunity to work with Pinellas County on uh, roughly 40 acres of, of property um, there um, that doesn't have any other user groups on it, which uh, is has been something that that um, has been a, 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 an interesting task to be able to try to do in Pinellas County since it's so densely populated. Um, so we're excited to be able to move forward that we're just waiting on Pinellas County to plant trees on the property so we can have canopy in about 10 years. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, and then, you know, we also are working uh, extensively with various user groups uh, and then also working with Terry and Sorba and also Imba to try to, uh, and then also including uh, um, DEP, um, to be able to uh, help usher in a, a really uh, robust interconnected greenway and trail, natural service trail system in Hillsborough County. So we have a lot of mileage of natural surface trail here in Hillsborough County, but none of it's connected by a greenway yet. And so we're working really hard to be able to get all of those properties connected to each other. One of the most significant projects that we've been able to get off the ground, it's 10 years in the making, maybe more, is being able to connect Bomboyet Scrub Preserve to Alafia River State Park. So the distance between the two parks is about four, 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 four and a half miles. Um, and, but you have to get into your car to go ride either one of them. And Bomboy at Scrub Preserve and Alafia River State Park are in the top three most popular uh, trail systems in the state of Florida. So this is a huge project um, to be able to try to get accomplished. Uh, so that way we can get people moving around um, from you know each property. Um, you know, and not have to get in their car to do so. Um, and then we're also working with Hillsborough County to be able to activate uh, potentially a 20 mile multi-use space uh, and trail area in the same area. 
Um, that is something that's been on their calendar for quite a while. Uh, and hopefully we're trying to, you know, help them to get, get that push through, through the red tape to be able to um, make all of that happen. Because the infrastructure is there um, to be able to take people all the way from the coast, uh, Nepal Beach area, uh, all the way inland um, towards Lakeland. So, you know, we're just trying to push that forward too. Uh, and then uh, the last thing that I want to mention is um, after extensively working with Sorba and Imba and other partners across the country and locally, we are ushering in a new era for our community here. We are utilizing a professional trail building company to activate the space for Temple Terrace and for Pinellas. Um, so we are in the process of merging away from all volunteer designed and built uh, trail systems to having uh, designed and built um, hybrid situations where volunteers can work alongside the trail builders um, to be able to activate the spaces. And this is really huge because one of the things in the state of Florida is that the majority of our trails that we have here um, have all been built by volunteer labor, which is amazing. And they've done amazing work and we've been able to accomplish a lot of amazing things. But um, there's limits to the skill sets and the abilities of volunteers when it comes to being able to um, further activate space uh, and to do so in a way that helps to um, alleviate uh, uh, land managers' concerns for risk, um, which has uh, been ever increasing as Terry uh, would, would probably support that notion as well. Um, and so, you know, having this, uh, you know, element is, is very big for our community here locally. Um, and we hope to continue to um, support uh, uh, professional trail building uh, efforts um, and, uh, you know, be able to move forward from there. Thanks so much, Shane. So if anyone has any questions for our presenters, now is the time. While we're waiting for questions, oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a question. It's really more of a comment. I'm, I'm very familiar with both uh, organizations and the areas that both presenters spoke about, um, having grown up in Miami as well and spent some formative snorkeling years on Virginia Beach, uh, uh, sewer beach, they used to call it, <laughs> um, and, and, and regularly ride those, those trails when I go down to visit my folks in Coral Gables and certainly applaud the, the work that you've done through Sorba, Terry, and um, the other gentleman through um, Swamp Mountain Bike Club. Um, I was an active mountain bike racer many years ago and, and did a lot of racing in LJ um, and all the local Florida the races and courses and trails. And these organizations really help promote mountain biking throughout the Southeast United States and have really done a great job. So I applaud you and your, your organizations for all the effort you've, you've done and had a personal opportunity to work with both organizations when I chaired the Recreational Trails Council for DEP years back as well and helped establish and write the, the um, um, basically the trail regulations and guidelines for mountain bikes, equestrians and hiking uh, on state land. So it was a pleasure to work with all those organizations. And um, again, we have, we have a great state with great progressive thinking on, 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 on unpaved trails. Thank you. Well, well thank you, George. Um, <laughs> so I just wanna make clear though, it's the Virginia Key Bicycle Club that built the trails there on Virginia Key and they did an awesome job. And uh, it's one of the places I like to go when I'm down in that area. Um, but thank you for that. Yeah, so I, I live in LJ. Awesome. <laughs> I love LJ. It's been a while, but it's a great place. Well, come on up. I'll take you for a ride. Perfect. <laughs> I think one of the things that, you know, we would love to see, if we know how important it is for engagement of all user types, not just mountain biking. So one of the things that I know that I would love to see and have been working diligently for, we Swamp's been working diligent for, diligently towards is being able to uh, help convince and show the people that hold the purse and the decision-making making abilities to be able to um, 
start interconnecting natural surface trail systems via natural surface trail um, into you know the paved greenway systems that are being done across the state. And you know the, the, there is a, a really large uh, opportunity for the the coast to coast trail um, and other connectors that um, DEP greenways and trails and, and, and folks are working on to try to finish. Um, and and there's, a, there's, there's some really unique opportunities along that particular corridor to be able to connect properties like Kroom um, and so forth, uh, and then also be able to um, create a satellite offshoot uh, natural surface trail systems off that paved greenway. Um, and the, one of the interesting things about the Pinellas project, because that is where the, uh, the very first starting point of the coast to coast will be, is in downtown St. Pete. Um, and uh, one of the things about the Pinellas project is that it's a mile and a half away from, the, from, the, from, that, from that paved greenway that they have there uh, in, in, uh, in Pinellas. So, you know, the, the potential for being able to connect this natural surface trail system to that paved greenway is, is a very real possibility in the future. And then I also know more towards uh, Claremont and Lakeland, I mean, the Orlando area, um, there's some really unique opportunities to create uh, natural surface trails along that coast to coast trail as well. And I know that I, I biked pretty extensively along the, um, uh, Seminole Trail and West Orange Trail and all of that stuff, but Sorbo Orlando um, has a, a couple of, of trail systems that uh, are accessible um, via paved greenway already. Um, and so uh, my, my biggest thing is I would really love to see um, more time and effort and resources spent um, into creating more natural surface trail recreation opportunities and not just for mountain biking, but for, you know, uh, for multi-use uh, uh, as well, uh, because the reality is, is, is in order for us to be able to get all of this stuff connected, um, it has to involve other user groups. Shane, I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to comment on what he said, and, and I did have a follow-up question. Um, I attended a uh, 2022 trail summit recently in DeBerry, and, and that was uh, a small topic of, of discussion on how to connect on these kind of mega paved trails, which are certainly great um, facilities and, 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 and very much needed because they do take us to wild areas and areas that we can, you know, then connect um, natural surface trails to. So I think that that's a great focus and I support that as well. And, and that's kind of one of my keen focuses lately is how to make those connections. Um, but the other question I really had for both of you is that, that there's been such a huge rise in, in gravel bikes, gravel riding, riding on unpaved roads, less traffic, has that complement of being off-road, often in rural areas. Um, are your organizations at kind of bringing that into your fold, or are you focusing more on forested lands? Because again, I think there's some value to preserving rural roads as well and providing those links and opportunities to our paved trails, to our natural surface trails as well. I'll start with that question. And that's a good question. Um, for, for Sorba, uh, not so much. Not that I don't do that type of writing. I, I have that opportunity. Uh, my husband, rides road bikes, gravel bikes, and mountain bikes. I do the same. And right out, my because I live in, in the mountains in North Georgia, I have that opportunity right out my door. Um, but for us, it would be a little bit of mission creep. So we try to focus on mountain biking. But I do want to make this point. Um, probably 95% of the trails that we have access to to mountain bike are multi-use. So mostly uh, the other user groups are going to be pedestrians. Um, we do have some trail that it's all three, uh, equestrians, pedestrians, and mountain bikers. Um, there's very few mountain bike only trails. There, there's, we're seeing more of it, um, but for right now, uh, we had to grow up in that world where we had to learn how to design trails and manage risk for uh, other user groups.
Um, so as far as swamp is concerned, um, I think that's also a point that that is important to note that would be a little bit more mission creep for us as well. Um, however, many of our local writers are also gravel writers. Um, and I know um, our uh, recently past vice president um, rides his, his cross bike everywhere. I mean, he doesn't even have a road bike anymore. He rides his cross bike on the road. He'll ride it, you know, on gravel. He'll even ride it on some of the easy stuff at Alify and, and Boyette. So, you know, the, the, the reality is, is that there is a lot of crossover there for sure. And we have engaged folks from the gravel community more um, in the last couple of years in, in our area, in the Tampa area. The tricky part is, is that um, because we're, we're, we're limited on our time and effort because of, we're all volunteers with our organization, um, that when, when folks from other user groups want to be able to achieve something, we always say that's amazing. We'll come to the table. We'll, we'll we'll do our part to help out, but we can't be the ones that actually you know take on a, a new task. So you know there are some things going on with the Hillsborough County Greenway Committee at this time. Um, our uh, representative from the community happens to be um, a gravel rider and mountain biker and mountain bike racer, uh, and also hiker and trail runner. <laughs> So he is a strong advocate for natural surface trails in general, um, but he also is trying to put it into the ear of folks. Uh, he just sent an email the other day asking uh, why, because the connection from the coast inland would be on a lot of, on a lot of access road, right? And, and it wouldn't be purpose-built mountain bike trail. It would be service road and fire road and, and county count through county property where they already have service roads through county property. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that being able to interconnect these spaces um, for gravel riding, um, you know, in particular and bike packing, we, we have a lot of people in our community that bike pack as well. So those, those folks are starting to get more involved with the discussions and showing up with the advocacy and stuff, which is great. And we, we're, we're giving them the resources and the information to do so. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the reality is, is like properties like Bomboyette, Scrub Preserve, and Alify River, River State Park, um, even though they have um, um, purpose-built mountain bike trails, uh, there's quite a few uh, mileage, especially at BOM, uh, for gravel riding. Um, and so if we can get those two properties connected along with um, Hillsborough County's vision of being able to have a 20-mile multi-use connected loop and then also connect it to the connect it to the uh, to the coast and have some camping options along the way and all of that stuff you know um, I mean that th that would be a huge accomplishment for our community here uh, so I hope I answered your question Going in the same uh, vein as Shane was talking about, Terry, I know you briefly touched on it, but can you go more in depth about some of the funding sources for mountain bike trails that you typically work with? Yes, uh, we've done a lot with the Recreational Trails Program grants uh, in the state of Alabama with Coldwater Mountain. Um, we just got awarded one here locally. Um, so it's, it's the grants that uh, really fund a lot of the trails. We're gonna, we're gonna try and do an RTP grant in, in Florida um, for the uh, Jennings State Forest project, which we've had going on from um, 2017. But uh, the way we like to approach it uh, and um, Shane uh, was talking about it too, is that we have learned so much in the last 40 years on how to build a sustainable natural surface trail. You know, IMBA literally wrote the books on it and are well respected uh, across the world on building sustainable, fun, uh, uh, natural surface trails, not just for mountain biking. Again, most of our stuff is multi-use. Um, so uh, engaging a professional trail builder is so important. 
And so we did that with Jennings State Forest. And I'm gonna uh, share a screen here for a second and show you a conceptual plan that was developed for Jennings State Forest. Jennings State Forest is just out just west of uh, uh, Jacksonville. And uh, there's an opportunity to build about 24 miles of uh, uh, professional trail. We have done the conceptual planning um, through IMBA uh, Trail Solutions, which is a program of IMBA. Uh, and a second company came in, Community Designs, uh, that came in and did the actual design. So conceptual planning is where a professional trail builder comes into the area, works with a land manager, holds stakeholder meetings to talk to the community and see what they want. And they come up with possibilities and opportunities and constraints for that particular property. Um, and then the second level is called design. That's where the professional trail builder comes in and actually flags the uh, trail corridors and writes up this trail specifications for it. And then the next step would be construction. So uh, we were able to, to fund through Florida, Florida Forest Service, they did some of the funding on that second level to get it to the point where we're ready to actually build. So we're gonna be looking at grants and, and hopefully any other opportunities and maybe some of y'all have some opportunities to, to, to uh, give me some insight on, on where funding can come from in the state of Florida. Um, but a lot of our local chapters, they also do a lot of fundraising. Um, they get uh, donations, they have events to raise money to actually get the construction done. Um, so there's, there's an, or, or approach foundations, writing, writing other grants. So there's a myriad of ways that we do fundraising to uh, get these builds done. Thanks, Terry. And I, I know you mentioned it briefly um, during your presentation, but I wanted to direct this question to Shane. In your area, um, because of COVID, have you seen an uptick in mountain bikers and um, within your organization? Yes, I'll answer that, but I wanted to mention a couple of things about funding. So one of the things that we recently did was, and this is also important too, I think, is uh, local governments um, should also have a stake uh, in, 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 in developing trails in their areas. Um, and we were first time ever in our 30 plus year history, we were able to get one of our land managers, uh, Hillsborough County uh, and the BOCC to approve uh, $300,000 to go toward the initial feasibility study mm -hmm of um, the connector between Bomboyette Scrub Preserve and Elephi River State Park. So that is also another thing too, is, is, is being able to um, advocate through county commissions, uh, and city councils and so forth, um, to show them the benefit. Uh, it takes a while because you know there's a lot of uh, people that want money from them. So it, it takes a while to to build up that trust and that and that relationship. So, but you just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it, and eventually, you know, these local governments will see the added value and benefit to their community, um, and then you know, hopefully, be willing to to help out in some way. Um, and then also, uh, uh, companies like REI um, put out grants, uh, to organizations, to nonprofit organizations, um, all across the country. Um, we've gotten several from them already. They have a Tampa store here, um, and, a, a one in Orlando. Um, we've gotten several, uh, grants from REI to be able to put towards the projects that we're trying to activate now. Um, and then of course, uh, fundraising locally, uh, as well. Um, and then we haven't been able to tap it into the statewide or national fundraising eff efforts with grants and stuff yet. We're slowly getting there, um, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that as well in the future. And then as far as COVID and an uptick, absolutely. So we just installed last October a trail counter at Bomb Boy at Scrub Preserve. Um, we donated it to the county. Uh, because the last 20 years that the trail system has been there, nobody really had any idea of what the usage looked like. And um, just since October, 
we will be on track for almost 100,000 visitors for that property in one year, actually less than a year, by, the, by, by year's end this year. So to answer your question, yes, uh, Alafia River State Park has become even more uh, popular and busy on the weekends uh, since COVID. Um, Flatwoods Wilderness Trout Creek, uh, Kroom, matter of fact, Kroom was the only open trail system during COVID in our area. And a lot of people flocked to that trail system uh, to be able to experience, you know, get out and recreate there. So we've had a lot more influx on that as well. Um, and so we're, we're, we're coming across some unique challenges with that though. Um, with the increased uh, usage, um, and it's not just tread, 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 you know, uh, trail tread wear, um, which is also a thing that we're experiencing because a lot of our trails um, do have a lot of um, high erosion areas uh, throughout the year, especially during the rainy season. Um, so, you know, other unique, well, not necessarily unique, but other challenges are people um, utilizing unauthorized usage types like one wheels um, and uh, throttled e-bikes um, and electric dirt bikes and dirt bikes and other things that end up not being so great for the, for the trail systems. And most of the trail systems that we have are on some sort of preservation or conservation land. <laughs> so that 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 is that is an issue, for sure. Um, we've also had um, you know an uptick with uh, people uh, with dogs off leash, like really bad, um, in the last few months. Um, and uh, and then also, um, th but there's been some really great benefits too, um, besides the challenges. Um, and that is uh, a lot more families, young families and children are out riding now. I rode at Alafia um, this last Sunday morning, and there was more kids and families out there than I've ever seen before in, in, in my 12 years of riding um, here and across the country. So, you know, uh, usership is definitely up. Um, Florida is growing exponentially. We're seeing something like 1,000 to 1,200 people come into our state a day. Um, Hillsborough County is, is, is even more crazy. Um, you know, and, and we're the amount of people that we're seeing wanting respite from the chaotic, chaotic craziness is definitely uh, ever increasing. So we're trying to work with our land management management partners to figure out ways to help mitigate the extra usage usage impact as much as possible, because that is a concern of ours and theirs. Uh, because we only have so many volunteer hours to dedicate to repairing trails. Um, and then also the land management agencies are concerned overall with making sure that the wild spaces are kept uh, relatively clean, you know, not relatively, but clean and free of garbage and, you know, trying to minimize impact as much as possible. And it's a challenge for sure. But Thanks so much for that information, Shane. Um, and looks like we have a few more minutes left for questions, if anybody has any questions. Don't be shy. Folks. <laughs> you, you can ask any type of question you like from funding to writing to you know, anything, just feel free to ask. Between Terry and I, uh, we have had a lot of experience. Terry's had a lot more than I have. But uh, if there's questions about, you know, how to activate spaces um, for, for your community or uh, where to start with advocacy or any of that. Oh, we have a question in the chat from Doug Alderson. With the new Florida e-bike law in 2020, what electric mobility devices are allowed on mountain bike trails? Yeah, Shane can probably answer that better than I can, but it really is up to the land manager as to what they will allow. We've seen a huge uptick in the purchasing of what we call a class one e-bike. A class one e-bike um, is pedal assist. 
meaning that there's no throttle. So it, it uh, you have to be pedaling the bike in order for the uh, electric component of it to assist you. And we found there's a lot of folks that have physical impairments or uh, getting old like me that uh, could use an e-bike. Um, it's new on the scene. Um, but our policy is, and I, I don't know what the Florida law is now, uh, but our policy is that it's between the local mountain bikers and the land agency as to whether they'll allow the class one. We don't support the class two, which is throttle assist, or the class three, which is again, pedal assist, but allows you to go a lot faster. Um, so, but uh, class one, um, I know a lot of my friends do, do ride them. So I will say 2019, I think, is when the statute was updated in the state of Florida to reflect um, a, a wider acceptance of um, e-bike usage and clarification of classes and so forth. Um, it does not mention uh, too much detail about natural surface trails. Um, and however, the statute still does allow um, for local land manager management agencies to determine the feasibility of their usage. Um, I will say that uh, Florida State Parks allows them on, 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 uh, at Florida State Parks on natural service trails, uh, class one pedal assist. Um, and then also um, Bomboy at Scrub Preserve also allows class one pedal assist at this time. Croom does as well, which is through forestry. Um, and so across the board, we're seeing class one pedal assist mountain bikes uh, being the being the accepted accepted uh, user um, uh, type for for that. Um, and it's taken some education uh, for these land management agencies to to get on board with that. But you know, honestly, we're we're not experiencing the the uh, negative outcomes that some people in the community have mentioned. Um, multiple times in the last few years, especially since their, their popularity has grown. Um, and then uh, also, um, you know, it's, it's tricky, right? And so we, because, because every land manager has their own rules and things that they have to abide by, um, and it really is determined in their um, land management plan. Uh, and in that management plan, if they allow certain usage usage types or not. So for instance, um, Bomboy at Scrub Preserve in their management plan allows for, uh, you know, uh, mountain biking, hiking, birding, uh, even fishing. Uh, I wouldn't fish out of those old mining, mining ponds, but um, so, but you know, they, they have specific usage types that they allow in their management plan. And, you know, that's also critical because there are some properties that may not be suitable for uh, EMTB um, usage. And for instance, one of the, so Temple Terrace um, is such a small uh, trail system uh, that EMTB usage, the city of Temple Terrace has determined that EMTB usage, even class one on that trail system uh, would not be appropriate. Um, uh, due to uh, the constrained uh, um, space. Um, there's just not enough space for both uh, regular bikers uh, and EMTB users and hikers to recreate uh, safely altogether. So um, it, again, it just depends. I think that that makes a lot of people confused. Um, so we always tell people we have resources up on Swamp's website for our local trails to let people know where that type of usage is allowed and where it's not allowed. Now it also gets even more complicated when you get into um, trails like the Withley Coochie State Trail, which has federal grant money involved with that. Um, and you know there are some restrictions on e-bike usage on trails like that as well, depending on what type of funding source it is um, and how it was designed and planned, and who designed it, and planned it, and built it, and so forth. So, you know, it, it's um, really need to, you know, try to get more information out to the community. And in our community in Tampa Bay, we've done the best that we can to let people know where where that usage is allowed. Um, and then also another thing too is, you know, we always tell people that if you have an idea of where, you know, that type of usage would be a benefit, 
um, that you should most definitely need to reach out to, you know, the local advocacy groups uh, so they can bring it to the attention of the land managers for them to make a decision on that. Our stance is, is the same as, as Sorba, the, you know, it's a decision between the local users and the land managers. Um, and ultimately it's the land manager's choice um, and decision to do so. Thanks so much, Shane. I did want to mention that both Sorba and Swamp have their um, websites in the chat. So if anyone wants to check out their websites and contact both Terry and Shane, you can do that through those websites. Um, and I also want to go ahead and thank our presenters for all of the information and presentations and the great discussion we had today. Um, if you would like to uh, have a recording of this webinar, that'll be available on Friday, and there will also be a survey going out after this. And if you have any other questions, you can email us on our Office of Greenways and Trails email. All right, thank you so much, and we're looking forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Thanks Terry. Everybody.